Hey everybody, this is Jimmy from the Unusual Minds watching bad movies so you don't have to. On this episode of Behind the B-Movie, we are ringing in the New Year's 80s style. That's right, we are watching Bloody New Year. So make sure to make your reservations early because we are getting shipwrecked at the nearest haunted hotel. Bloody New Year, alternatively titled Time Warp Terror, is a 1987 British horror film directed by Norman J. Warren and starring Susie Eckerson, Nikki Brooks, and Colin Haywood. The film's plot is pretty simple and it concerns a group of British teenagers trapped in a haunted hotel on a remote island. Warren was approached by Maxine Julius to make a horror film and she developed the plot over seven days with line producer Hayden Pierce. Bloody New Year was meant as an homage to 1950s B-movies. The film being set on an island trapped in a time warp where it's always New Year's Eve, 1959. Originally, the entire film was to be set in the 1950s, but the idea was abandoned due to budget constraints. According to Warren, the premise was inspired by a real-life contamination of the Scottish island as a result of a failed disease control experiment. Bloody New Year was filmed in June and was shot mostly in and around the sea resort of Barry Island in South Wales, with Friars Point House serving as the filming location for the Grand Island Hotel. Doctor Who story Delta and the Bannerman was filmed there the same year. That story, like Bloody New Year, has a 1950s theme. The fairground scenes were filmed at Barry Island's long-running fun fair with minimal supervision from the owners who gave the crew full use of the site and attractions for a week at the cost of 300 euros, which would be about 885 euros as of 2019. To secure extras for the scenes, the crew offered free rides to members of the public. The ballroom scenes were filmed at the Pageant Rooms Theater in Penarth and the scenes of Janet's death in a disused tower block. The film's opening credits play over black and white footage presenting the 1959 Grand Island Hotel New Year's Eve party. The extras playing the dancing hotel guests were members of the local Rock and Roll Preservation Society and worked unpaid. The extras from Fiend Without a Face were supplied free by its producer, Richard Gordon, a friend of Warren who had produced an earlier film, Inseminoid. A stunt scene in which the character Rick opens the back door of a cottage only to find himself dangling over a cliff was performed by actor Mark Powley without safety equipment. Warren had envisioned a particularly bloody scene for the film's climax where a zombified dad kills Rick by slicing his head off with a outboard motor propeller. Unfortunately, the violence was toned down to ensure that the British Board of Film Classification would have awarded the film a 15 certificate instead of a more restrictive 18. Warren has commented negatively on the film. In one interview, he described Bloody New Year as a terrible experience for me. In fact, it turned out to be a bloody nightmare. We had the wrong producers on that film and they didn't know anything about horror, so the film lacks in every department. And by the end of it, my heart just wasn't in it. He added that the film's producers wanted to make the film cheaply and terribly quick, and that that was the determent of the music and sound effects. In another interview, Warren criticized the music, stating that it just doesn't work. He added, on the second day of dubbing, I must confess I gave up on the film. I'd run out of fight. I just sat there and let them go through the motions. Warren said that his experiences on Bloody New Year put him off making any more films. The film was not given a cinema release in the United Kingdom. It was released on home video in the UK by Brave World IVS in September 1987. 
In the United States, the film was released directly to VHS on Betamax on the 22nd of October, 1987, through Academy Home Entertainment. Kim Newman describes the film as a feeble dump pin video quickie. Dennis Swartz, in his review for Ozus World magazine, calls it a goofy film with brutal dialogue, cheesy direction, and not much plot. According to Jake D. of JoeBlow.com, the film's cheap and silly. Practical effects are reminiscent of a fun early Herschel Gordon Lewis film. D adds that the film plays like a haunted house flick in the interiors and a traditional zombie flick in the exteriors. With the middle ground breeding place for both genuinely odd and unsettling amalgamation of both. Overall, one of the biggest strengths of this movie is due to the fact that it has an interesting premise. I love the whole time warp angle and thought that it was just a cool idea. Though it's a bit slow in the beginning, once things got going, I was pleasantly surprised. There was a slew of ghosts, demons, zombies knocking off teenagers one by one, and most of them look pretty cool. And the kill scenes are well done, though they're a little derivative of Sam Raimi's work. So, if you are looking for a supernatural way to ring in the new year, I say check it out. <laughs>